Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about lighting, but specifically interior lighting. So we're gonna be going over the Redshift Sun and Sky Rig, dome lights, HDRIs, and how we can use all of these in conjunction to create realistic interior lighting. This is actually taken from an old Patreon video where I created this interior scene from scratch, starting with modeling, doing lighting, texturing, and then ultimately rendering out this interior scene. But as I said, today we're gonna to be focusing on the lighting section because in my opinion, lighting is probably one of the more important parts of 3D because you can use it to really elevate the look and feel and quality of your 3D renders. So I'm super excited to share this part of the process with you. It's gonna be packed full of knowledge which you can take away and apply to your own work. I hope you enjoy the video and I will catch you on the flip side. Enjoy. So we got the basic composition set up. Uh, let's get the lighting in. So we will just grab a redshift sky and sun. And let me just kind of tidy this up. So this is objects, there we go. And then camera goes in there and lighting in there, cool. And I like to bring my sky up just so I can actually see the line. And this line is basically telling us what direction the sun's pointing in. So it's shining down at that direction. So if I press play, we should get some light come through. For some reason we're not. Oh, okay, I know why. Because obviously our glass windows are a solid material. So let's uh, quickly create a redshift standard material. And this will just be our glass material just quickly, just for us to preview this. There we go. We'll call this a window pane. Drag that onto all of these glass objects here. There we go, cool. So that solves that problem. And also need to turn off the roughness. Sweet, cool. So we got the basic setup. Let's play with this sun. So I like to try to find a nice angle, which I think is going to give us some interesting lighting. So maybe something like this, where we're kind of getting some of the light hit the wall. And I'm going to turn up the scale of this to like something like 10. So it's a lot softer. Obviously, the larger you go with this sun, the softer your lighting is going to be. So let's try something like 10. That's fine for now. And I'm also gonna add a HDR. So let's get a dome light in here and let's get a HDR. Now, what I like to do with a HDR is I like to use it more as a fill. I don't like to use it as a way of giving us direct lighting like the sun. But yeah, like I said, just a way to fill it. So you can see just with a white HDR, it's already helping to fill the room. So let's just grab one from HDRI Haven called Approaching Storm. This is just like a cloudy kind of HDR. And if I was to turn off the sun and sky, you'll see no matter how I rotate this HDR, it doesn't really give us direct lighting, but instead it's it's giving us kind of soft lighting, which is nice. So we can use this just as a fill for our scene. So you can see if I enable the sun and sky now, I disable HDR, it does make quite a bit of difference. Obviously, we're not too worried about the backplate right now. So we could probably actually disable that and just keep the sky backdrop. And instead we'll just drop down the horizon height to like minus 0 0.5. Okay, minus one. There we go, cool. That's fine. And we'll blur it a little bit because I can see it on the left. There we go, cool. So yeah, like I said, the dome light's just gonna help to lift those shadows and also just brings a bit of like coolness in there a little bit because it feels quite dark and quite warm almost in these like shadowed areas here. So. That HDR just helps to balance that out. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable the sun and the sky. And with these interiors, I find that to be honest, I don't like to bad mouth redshift, but it doesn't handle interiors as well as some other render engines. In particular Corona is an amazing render engine. Just seems to like give you beautiful lighting straight out the gate. In redshift, we have to work a little bit harder. And I like to do that through the redshift post effects. So. I'm just going to, first of all, enable photographic exposure. You can see straight away that's going to lift the levels of our scene and it's going to lift those shadows, doesn't look as dirty. Um, and we can increase this even more by dropping the f-stop to like 6.4, for example. And obviously you can go as low as you want with this. I'm going to go for 6.4. And let's increase the allowed overexposure to like 0.4, something like that. And straight away, that's just going to help to lift the room a little bit. And we'll come back to this later on in the scene, depending on like 
how the lighting changes or how the textures look. But this straight away is just going to help to lift it. The other thing you can do is you can go to color controls and boost the exposure. And again, that's just going to really help to lift this scene. Maybe we'll go to like 0.5. And now we may have to just drop or increase the f-stop slightly and maybe drop the allowed overexposure just because there's some kind of hot areas here where the lighting's coming in. And straight away, we already have quite nice soft lighting just with this HDR. And like I said, this is from HDRI Haven, which I think is now called Polyhaven. And it's all free, so you can download those. And you can already see how building out more of the scene is helping because we're getting some of those reflections from this glass coming through where we can kind of see the windows behind the camera. So it's like I said at the beginning, it's important to sometimes build out like an entire scene as opposed to just what you're seeing in your main camera. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to enable the sun and sky and maybe now this is going to make it super overexposed, but actually it doesn't look too bad. And now it actually looks like a nice well lit room. So I can disable this. I'm going to go back to my startup layout just to keep everything how I like it. And let's play with this sky and sun. So what lighting can we get just by kind of rotating it around different angles? We want something which is going to highlight our objects well. And obviously we're going to have to bring some in to like really get a look at what is best. And sometimes you do kind of have to modify it to get more interesting lighting. So maybe I'll have to like move some windows around. Um, but I think this looks pretty good. Maybe we could make these shadows a little bit longer like this. Uh, you could even go for like this quite sunset -y feel, which is quite nice. And there's a few settings as well that we can play with in the Redshift Sun and Sky. I quite like this where we see a little bit of the sunlight come through in the foreground just in this section here, but it's also helping to illuminate this wall on the right hand side. And this feels quite nice. So yes, like I said, there's a few settings we can play with, not many. Um, but one thing I do like to do is I like to sometimes add a tiny bit of warmth in the sun. So if I'm to if I was to increase this slider to the right, you'll get a much warmer sun. You can go super stylized with it, get like a really bright yellow, super red kind of feel. Um, but if you use it quite subtly, so maybe like 0.1, it's just going to help to add a tiny bit of warmth, just make your interior feel a li little cozier. Uh, you can see a little bit of the warmth in the, in the light of the sun here, which is nice, and also just gives a slight tint to the room. The other thing we could do is we could take some of the saturation out, and that's going to take the saturation out of the sun, but also the sky. Sometimes it's a little bit vibrant, so maybe we could drop this to like 0.7 or something. That's just going to take a little bit of color out. And there we go. I think everything else is uh, pretty good. You can see without that dome light, you can see how kind of warm that sun is now. If I was to set it to zero, it would just be a neutral color. So maybe we can kind of strike a balance between the two. So like 0 0.05, give us a slightly warmer sun. Turn our dome light on, that's going to cool it back off. But we could also reduce the saturation of that HDR, so maybe 75. Now we've got a fairly kind of grayscale scene, which is good because it means it's not going to taint like the textures of our objects too much which means, yeah, we can kind of start to bring those in without it messing up our textures. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful and found some knowledge in there which you can apply to your own work. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is an extract from a longer Patreon video. It's actually about five hours long. It's still one of my longest tutorials on Patreon and one of my most popular. So definitely go and check it out if you want to learn more about these interior scenes and kind of the whole process from start to finish. So thank you again for watching the video. If you have any feedback, let me know in the comment section down below. Enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, peace.